So welcome back. I hope you have thought a little bit about what Kurt is doing. In the normal course of events, search space, search would go depth first, manner sweeping the tree from left to right. But if there is a cut operator somewhere in one of the rules, in this case the middle part of the subtree, the middle subtree which is corresponds to the middle rule in the this thing. And then if you have managed to show the first clause for A1 which is B3 in this case, once you have shown B3 is true, you have to go on to B4. But what Kurt is saying is that fine, go and see if you can make B4 true, but do not try to make A1 true by any other means. You are committed to the solution that you have found for B3 and whatever you can find for B4 is the best that you can do. Any other options for solving A1 are not available to you. So, this is the uh, definition uh, of uh, this is how we can understand cut. So, if there is some rule, let us call it rule R5, which says that A is true if B1 up to BK is true and C1 up to CN is true, but there is a cut in between. After the Bs, there is a cut. How will this uh, prologue behave with this kind of a rule? If the B1 to B k part fails that you cannot show it to be true, then we will simply ignore this rule R5 which is the rule here and then go and try the next rule which is R6 or something. So, we have a set of rules let us say R1 up to R9 or something. So, if you fail to reach the cut, you simply backtrack and behave like everything is normal and go and try the next rule. However, if this B1 to BK succeeds and then you cross the cut and go to the C's in this rule, it commits to the first solution of B1 to BK, that one solution that you have found that that is the only solution you can give back to the user and prunes all alternate solutions to B1 to BK from this rule R5, that nothing else should be tried and fully evaluates C1 up to Cn. Though C1 up to Cn may give you more than one solution, you are allowed to give those solutions out, but nothing else essentially. And it prunes all the rules below R5 with the same head. That means anything which is below R5, those rules are also pruned essentially. They are not, you cannot look at them. So, let us look at a couple of examples of how cut can be used. Here is some program without cut. So, let us first understand them. Uh, we want to compare two numbers x and y and we write it as follows that if x is less than y, you return minus 1. If x equal to y, you return 0 if x is greater than y, you return 1. That is one example. There is another example in which you want to char characterize people. So, let us say you have to decide whether you are eligible for a booster dose of the COVID vaccine or not. And you may have rules like this. If age is greater than 60, then return D. So, the return word is important here. You are returning that thing and you are done with it. Essentially. If age is greater than 40, return C. If age is greater than 20, return B. Else you return A. So, some cat categorization of age groups essentially 60, 40, 20 and younger than 20. So, if you wrote this in prologue, you would say that in these three lines that compare x with y and return minus 1. So, minus 1 will always be the output that you are returning to that or in other words 
comparing x and y gives minus 1, the way to interpret that is the third argument is the result in some sense. This statement is true that x, y minus 1 is true if x is less than y and do not try compare ever again because we have put a cut here. So, if you succeed in showing that x is less than y, then you are done. Just return minus 1 and forget about the other two rules that are there for compare. If we have gone past this stage, if x is less than y, if x is not less than y, then you will of course backtrack from there and come to the second rule which will compare whether x is equal to y. If that also does not work, you will backtrack and go to the third rule and then hopefully that will work because you know there are only these three possibilities that if x is greater than y. But if in any of the th three rules you succeed and you go to the cut, you are saying that do not try any further any other rules and you are done with that. Now, obviously, when you are comparing these two numbers, there can be only one of these three options. You can never have two answers. So, this cut is not really changing the meaning of the program. You will always return minus 1 or 0 or 1 depending on whether x is less than y or equal to y or greater than y. And there is not going to be any change in the way prolog behaves because you have added a cut. The only effect of cut will be that you will not try the other useless computations uh, because you know we have seen that prolog tries to give you all answers and you do not want the other answers. Once you have got one answer, cut says do not look for other answers. So, under such mutually exclusive conditions which describe deterministic computation, prolog behavior does not change using a cut and such cuts are called green cuts which means they do not change the meaning of the program. Here is another example of a green cut. So, this is just as another example that uh, you can look at. Uh, you are trying to identify whether you are looking at a polynomial on x or not essentially. And we have a number of rules here. Every rule has a cut inside it. The first rule says if n is a number or nat as we had defined maybe, then n is a polynomial in x. And you can return that and do not try to match n with x for example and then do something and so on essentially. The second argument is the variable in the polynomial. So, if you want n is a polynomial, 3 is a polynomial in x, of course, it does not use x, x is a polynomial in x. Two x plus three y, sorry, two x plus two three x square is a polynomial in x, and so on essentially. So, what these different rules are saying is that a number is a polynomial in x. The variable itself is a polynomial in x. X is a polynomial in x. Otherwise, if there are two terms and there is a sum of two terms, and if each term is a polynomial in x then the expression which says t1 plus t2 is a polynomial in x. Likewise for minus and multiplication and add and exponentiation. With all these rules, you have different rules and you can see that only one of these patterns will match a goal essentially. You cannot match more than once. Either the main connective is plus or minus or whatever the case may be. Only one thing will match and therefore, it makes sense to place a cut. As soon as you have found a match, just test whether the two constituents t1 and t2 in this example, in most of the examples, they are polynomials. If that is the case, then your query is true. So, this is another example of a deterministic computation where the cut does not do any harm. It only saves you computation time. So, if you look at these examples, uh, uh, whether these expressions are polynomials, x raised to y plus x plus 1 is not a polynomial, it returns false because we have not talked about y. If it was x raised to 3 or something, it would have worked essentially. 
So, here 1 plus x raised square works 1 plus and so on and you can see all these are examples of polynomials. Any, any complex expression will be recognized as a polynomial provided it matches the rules that it has done essentially. So, that was another example of a green cut. This age example is an example of a red cut. So, if there are four categories of age A, B, C, D, you want to return only one category. So, so if somebody's age is 70, then of course, this case is true that uh, age is greater than 60 and uh, the category of that person is D essentially. Now, if the cut was not there, the program would go to the second line and it will say if the age is greater than 40. So, we have already said that person's age is 70. So, obviously, it is greater than 40. So, it will say yes, that person is in category C and uh, then it will say yes, age 70 is greater than 20. So, it is in category B and likewise, we will say that category age A applies for everyone without any conditions. So, if we had not put the cut sign and just written the rest of the program, then for somebody with age 70, we would get 4 answers, somebody with age 50, we would get 3 answers and so on. So, that is not really what we want to do. So, this is an example where we want to avoid those answers which we do not want. We could have written a more complex program uh, uh, to say that category D means greater than 60. We could have said category C means greater than 40 and so age less than 60. Let me just use less than instead of less than equal to or maybe less than equal to ok. We could have written a rule which says that if you are more than 40 and less than 60, then you are in category C, but we have not done that. We have written only the lower limit. If you are greater than 60, then you are D. If you are greater than 40, then you are C and so on. We can still make that program work as we desire by putting these extra cuts here which says that if you have found somebody with age greater than 60, do not look for another category for that person and that is what the cut will do essentially. So, this is an example where the cut changes of the meaning of the given program. So, just imagine the program without the cut. This program has a certain meaning. If you give a input as A 70, it will give you 4 answers A, B, C, D if you and so on essentially. You do not want those 4 answers. You want for 70 that only the category should be D. Then either you have to write the rules more carefully as I have said here that if you are greater than 40 and less than 60, then you are C. If you are greater than 20 and less than 40, then you are B. If you are less than 20, then you are A. You could write it like that. But what the red cut allows you to do is to write it in this more compact form and give you the desired result. So, it is changing the meaning of the program essentially that with this cut, if I give 70 as an input, it will only give me category D, it will not give me other answers essentially, but it has changed the meaning of the program. The program inside this uh, boundary that I have drawn is has a different meaning means different behavior then the program with the cut included essentially. And as I said, you can convert red cuts into green cuts, but very often they are uh, devices which are used for efficiency purposes. The definition of negation by failure is also an example of a red cut essentially. Because if this call p returns true and we cross the cut, 
we do not go to the second clause. We want to say that not p is true essentially. Sorry, not p is false. Because if p is true, we want to say not p is false. We do not want to give both answers. Without the cut, we would have ended up giving both answers. So, in summary, green cuts prune wasteful search, does not prune solutions. Removal of green cuts does not change the meaning of the program. By meaning, we mean the set of answers that it will generate. Uh, preserves the declarative nature of the programs essentially. So, you can understand them. Their meaning is the same as if when you were writing it without cuts essentially. The red cut also prunes the search space. It prunes solutions that and you can use it effectively to prune solutions that you do not want as we saw in the age example. Removal of red cut will change the outcome as we again have seen and it leads to often leads to concise programs. This is simply because prolog is an ins instantiation of logic programming where you are as a user giving only the relations between different objects and this SLD resolution which is depth first search uh, on a goal tree is searching through all possibilities. So, sometimes we, once we have done something you do not want it to continue searching and that can be implemented by cut. We saw an early example uh, that uh, if you want to check whether an element is present in a list or not, is too present in my given list, you just want a yes no answer. I do not want a sequence of 3 yeses if there are 3 occurrences of 2 essentially. So, that kind of stuff you can do using cut. So, this was a brief introduction to Prolog which is a programming languages which is based on logic. In fact, Prolog stands for programming in logic. We looked at uh, some models for Prolog and some key elements of Prolog. We recognize that unification is the main mechanism for passing information back and forth when we think of it as procedural calls. We saw this notion of negation of failure and uh, we saw that cuts can be quite useful uh, because of the way that the prolog search engine is built which does deterministically depth first search. So, we as a user can add something to what it is searching for and we made a passing mention of table ex execution in which we can prevent infinite loops when we have left recursion in some recursive rules essentially. So, you do not want to keep going through that recursive rule again and again essentially. So, I hope that gave you a good idea of prologue and uh, we will look at another declarative language which is called ops5 which works only in the forward chaining mode but which is not as deterministic as prologue is in terms of how do you choose which rule to fire. It is another interesting uh, application of rule based reasoning and we will come back to that.